I I really resonate with what you said about like not asking for help. I feel like that was one of the main like one of the things I feared the most in the past was just falling behind on things. And it's because I never asked for help. And I've been getting better at that, but I'm really curious to know like what are some of like the really tactical mind shifts that you would suggest for a person that is just trying to get into that rhythm of asking for help when they know they need it? Like any tactical ways to just know how to invite that the right people to help you in those issues and everyday tasks or problems. I just wanted to get your insight on that. Yeah, I think the most important thing is whenever you start something, assume you need help. <laughs> and don't wait until you are deep in the throes of it when you go, oh, I need help. Like if anything you start, Caleb, any any enterprise, any endeavor, any project, any tactic, like it doesn't have to be the, you know, I'm changing the world moment. It's I got this project I got to finish in three months. You should work from the assumption of um, I'm going to need help. And it may not be on day one, but it'll be on day 27. Mm -hmm. And and so if I can surround myself with good people and uh, and create an openness for help, I'm going to have a much more um, dynamic experience because, you know, one of the most irritating things in the world and, uh, and I think Aaron could probably like raise his hand up on the little screen on this is when you're really good at certain things, but people don't ask you until they're in crisis for help. I'm still jumping the <laughs> lagoon. The lagoon over here, I'm going to jump in with the crocodile. Yeah, that, that happens there in a lot. And uh, I've watched. And uh, and so he ends up coming in a lot of times in the crisis management section of things. And um, and I think it's just so much easier to go in the beginning go, ah, I always need this kind of help, or I always need this kind of perspective, or I always need someone with this kind of, of gifting. And, um, you know, I, I was working with a, a board last night and they have, it's, it's, it's a terrible organizational structure from my perspective because they have two equal leaders and, um, but they're completely different personality wise. And, and and so when you're dealing with two equal leaders who have very, very different internal structures, the structures that need to be around them are so dramatically different. that It's almost like you have, it's not just two people. You have to build almost two completely different structures. And it's one of the challenges at times in, in when you're trying to work with co-leaders. And uh, I, I don't know why, but I was reminded of the moment when Jerry West did not want to make Pat Riley the head coach. And so he announced that, uh, not Jerry, uh, Jerry Buss. So he announces that Jerry West and Pat Riley will co-coach and, and they'll figure out how that's going to work. <laughs> and and uh, Jerry West, who was really brilliant and understood leadership dynamics, got up there and said, let me cl be clear. I am not the head coach. Pat Riley is the help, head coach and I will be assisting him. Now, Jerry West, one of the greatest basketball minds in the world, did not think it was beneath him to say, I'm under this guy, not equal with him. And Pat Riley was actually at the beginning of his coaching career, did not have the stature to hold that position. He held that position because someone with greater stature was willing to go under him. And, and yet Jerry West should have been delusional. He should have said, of course I can do this. But he was not capable of handling the structural pressure psychologically of being the head coach. But he could handle the complexity of making the great decisions to build a great team. You have to know yourself. And in a sense, this requires humility to go, this is what I'm not good at. And every time I do something, I end up finding myself tripping myself up because this is not what I'm good at. So why don't I start the process where the team who's really good at what I'm not good at. And it's because they slow you down at first. You don't want their input. You don't want their advice. You don't want them in the room. You just want to be in the room by yourself until you need them. And by the way, if you wait like that all the time, you're going to get lesser people in the room because fewer people will let you invite them at the end if you don't invite them in the beginning. So, Caleb, just find people in your life that you like bring in from the beginning, even if you don't need them in the beginning, because you're going to need them in the middle.